Manufacturing contributes to the beating heart of a city, and in London, the sounds of artisanal methods can still be heard as craftsmen find their niche in the urban environment. Monocle Films travelled through the British capital to visit three makers whose traditional methods are reinvigorating age-old skills. From globe-making to the chiselling of spoons and on to weaving, we observe the hands crafting their way to successful business. My name is Peter Bellaby and I have a small company in North London making globes called Bellaby & Co. We were founded in 2008 out of a search, my own search, for a globe for my father's 80th birthday. It was all basically trial and error. There's no one you can ring up or there's no book you can read that tells you how to do it. I've had customers who literally have been searching for a globe for 30 years. We've developed now a range of globes, from the desk globe up to our large Churchill globe, which is 50 inches in diameter. Seemingly, the, the beauty of globes had been lost. They were just there as a function. For me, it, it was important that the aesthetic beauty of, of all our globes um, comes through. So that's why everything we now do by hand. But it's a long process. It can take, for the smallest globe, up to a month. And for the largest globe, six months at least. If anything ever goes wrong, we will scrap what we're doing and start again. Everything leaves here has to be perfect. The reason all the old globes now are falling apart is because they use traditional materials. Whilst we've looked for, at those for inspiration, we're now very much using modern materials. I would ideally like our globes to last as long as possible and if in a hundred years time they need restoring then it's feasible and easy to do. Ultimately I want a modern map, I want a map that says what the world is today so that um, it sort of means something. I don't really see the point in having a map where half of the continent is unexplored. Every piece of wood that you work with is different. It's, it's got this unique beauty always. So you're always looking for shapes and anomalies. It's not until you open a piece of wood that you see it and then you're looking and thinking, well look, I can utilise that. And there's a sort of a co-design in which this piece is coming into existence, partly due to the maker's actions, but also partly due to the structure of the wood. I think as a maker, very conscious to always hand carving spoons with traditional tools. We start cleaving, which is the splitting of wood, working with axes and then with chip knives and chisels, working down to the final finish with cabinet scrapers. And then once they're dried, which might take a couple of weeks, we can take them to finish so you can achieve a really lovely polished finish to the wood. So they're very simple traditional processes, but uh, they have a relevance in, in a sort of contemporary uh, world. I think the spoons are very simple objects, they've got simple use, and I think also, especially with the wooden spoons, they symbolise the connection that, that human culture, human making, is dependent upon the natural world. I think there's a real readiness for um, people to connect with natural materials, the handmade process, and to have yeah, aspects of these highly laboured objects in their living lives. We're done with cheap throwaway, and just to have a few special things is actually more precious than, than having a hundred that we really don't care about. This is the London Cloth Company. This is the first cloth mill to have opened in London for 100 years. I actually only started weaving about three years ago and initially this wasn't the plan. It was really just a, a fun project. <laughs> Something to do in those long cold nights.
So a huge part of it for me, which is just rescuing tons of machinery. I mean, all of this stuff would have been scrapped had it not been rescued. I can't think of anything better than like going around the country and rescuing machinery, but I've got to find a way to fund it somehow. So <laughs> why couldn't you run a mill with this machinery and actually run it profitably, developing the London Cloth Company as a brand rather than as a just a mill? We, we work very closely with the people who are going to be buying the fabric. It's very rare that we end up doing the same thing twice. Obviously, to carry a sort of woven in London label, we're the only people that can do that. We're not out to compete with these companies overseas that are going to be producing stuff for £2 a metre. But there's another market which can afford to spend that bit extra for something that is superior in quality and it is a very good time for the manufacturing, this, this side of the manufacturing industry. Originally, this was going to be what we could term the micro mill. When we, the day we moved in here, we'd already outgrown it. And I've just secured a new site, uh, which is still in London, and it's about three times the size of this. I've actually just done a whole set of patterns that we're going to start making some clothes. So we have an entirely vertical clothing line, which is it's just amazing. 